Judaism has what I like to call a, a secret for a successful life and, and a happy life, and that's really just a, a switch off. I enjoy social media because it's there, but I wouldn't miss it if it was gone. Just because you don't have technology doesn't mean you can't have fun. Nowadays, it's really difficult to switch off. I think there's a lot to be learned from Jewish observances and practices and the stepping away from the modern world and all of the challenges that it presents. Passover begins this Monday night and it's actually a, a festival that celebrates freedom and it's the, the freedom of the Jewish, of the ancient Hebrews from slavery in Egypt 3,300 years ago and their formation um, as they become a nation, as they become the Jewish people. Stratford College is a fascinating school in that it was originally founded by the Jewish community for Jewish students and as the community dwindled over the years uh, it's become a multi-denominational environment. A small number of our students overall would be Jewish, but it's a very important part of the ethos of the school. Uh, there would be students of all religions and none uh, in the school. For the first sort of 15 minutes of today's class, we'll go on to the desktop version of OneNote, and then scroll down and we we'll link to ECDL. We would use technology a lot in our teaching and learning. Uh, it's had a huge influence now in the classroom. Through technology class, we would be teaching them internet safety, how to manage their use of IT. We would have rules and regulations about how often it's used, when it's used in school. It's very much teacher-led. Turn off the monitors, turn off the monitors, OK? Everyone turn off your monitors. It's going to be unplugged. OK, there you go. I'm a fan of the social media in the sense that I really enjoy being able to talk to my friends kind of whenever. Um, but I think like all things, it's in moderation. One of the main things I like about it is that you can voice your own opinions. I think one of the strong challenges for parents and educators today is that we're dealing with an entirely new generation, a generation that was never without technology. And so they're surrounded, whether it's social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat, whatever the latest social media feed of the day is, it's constant. I talk to teenagers and the first thing they check in the morning is their phone, the last thing they check at night is their phone, middle of the night they wake up, they're checking their phone. And there's a beauty in that, that they're constantly connected and there's a danger in that in our day-to-day -day lives, in our privileged lives that we have. You know, how can we reflect on freedom and liberation? Is there anything that we need to be freed from? When we're not in school, I'd say I'm on my phone almost every minute. Oh, a lot of hours. But, like, unintentionally, like, I don't know. I'd say about four. I try to restrain myself as much as possible, but, like, at the same time, I'd probably say easily five or six minutes in every ten. You do it without realising, like you'll be in the middle of an essay or something like that, or reading something, and you'll just glance onto it, and I'd imagine all those minutes sort of add up. I'd be on my phone maybe nine minutes out of every ten. It's crazy. Young people are bombarded by social media, by technology. They're always on, uh, never off, and that has, it poses great difficulties for them, great challenges. Social media, yeah, it would make you feel anxious because there's such a huge pressure to constantly be talking to people. Like, you can never take a minute of your day because if you don't reply to people, people assume you're ignoring them or they assume that you're angry at them and there's a huge pressure for people. I know, like myself especially, to constantly be online, constantly be available, always looking at the latest thing, always posting the best picture. There's a lot of pressure on people. If there's anything that the non-Jewish students could learn from the Jewish students in the school, I would suggest maybe it's this idea of, of Passover, which is about um, unplugging from all of that social media, all that technology that we're engrossed with all the time. And, you know, we have family gatherings where everyone is sitting around staring at their own small screen in, in their hand. And Passover and the Sabbath, it's, it's about, you know, putting that stuff away and actually focusing, uh, looking at the people that we care about and spending time talking to our family and friends and reconnecting with them on a, on a real basis. It's a good idea. It gives you time to, like, be with family, you eat, you know, socialize. It's, it's just a time to kind of reflect. 
One of the key ingredients of the Passover meal and the festival is this traditional cracker, which is called a matzah. Matzah can be square or it can be a hand-baked round matzah. Uh, it symbolizes a couple of things. One is humility, this kind of flat bread symbolizes that we need to be humble. But also it reminds us of the Hebrew slaves fleeing Egypt. They have no time for their dough to rise, and so they end up eating this kind of unleavened flat bread. We remember them by eating that bread at the Passover meal. The centerpiece of the Seder table is a tray full of symbolic foods that we eat. Uh, one of the key ones is called maror, a bitter herb. We eat that and it reminds us of the bitterness of slavery. There's also a dish of salt water to remind us of the tears of slavery. And these things are of course symbols of the past, but they're also a reminder that we have to be conscious that slavery does exist and needs to be eradicated all the way into the future as well. I think definitely yeah, you can take a leaf out of their book that there's like no real harm in everybody kind of taking a step back. Okay, so you want to come in and take a seat? One of the things that we need to do is give mechanisms to enable these forward-thinking, bright young people, give them the, the tools to deal with that non-stop wave of information and social media that they're surrounded with. Great, so what we're going to cover today in SPHE is we're going to have a little look at resilience, how we can build upon it, what we already know, and ways of improving it. So resilience is, you can see a little spring here. So if you can imagine when something bad happens to you or something that you're not looking forward to happens, you bounce back, that you don't just kind of get knocked down and stay there, that you bounce back up again. So we move on to the next slide. Stress and adversity can come from what? How about being separated from your phone? With social media, you're constantly connected to other people. So like without your phone, you know, maybe it's better because you can relax more because you're not worrying about, you know, what this person's posting, what you're missing out on or uh, what pictures people aren't liking. Yeah, yeah. And what might you do to calm yourself down if you do feel like you're freaking out? Well, most people just say breathe. Breathe. Like, breathe in, Brilliant. Breathe so big deep breath. So deep breathing is one excellent way of grounding yourself. I quite like being with myself, so I find it quite easy to be mindful and just like allow things to happen and acknowledge it and then let it pass. Okay, so we're going to practice some mindfulness breathing. Um, I'm going to count to six for our inhale, and then we'll count down from six for our exhale. So nice big breaths filling up your chest, your lungs, um, and then exhaling it all out. Okay, so we're ready. So breathing in, one, Two. From a national point of view, well-being is coming in as a new area of learning through the new junior cycle, which we would welcome. And it uh, is a very holistic approach to children's well-being. It incorporates um, physical and mental and spiritual uh, development. Uh, and we're switching to teaching them skills and self-regulation skills uh, in order to be able to manage, the, to navigate this world. Right, well done. We're going to put what we've just learned into practice. We're going to go outside, we're going to exercise, we're going to get your endorphins to kick in and give you that positive outlook on life. Well done. Let's go. Our job is to make sure that there's a sense of balance and also a sense of reality that who are your real friends, where are your real relationships, being aware that the things that we see on social media are the best parts of people's lives, they're not real. And those are the challenges of making sure that, uh, that that young generation who are incredibly tech savvy and bright and intelligent are aware of the possible dangers and to be able to sift out the good bits from the bad. Right guys, we all ready? Yeah. yeah, brilliant. So we're going to go for one minute. Three, two, one, go. We need to put technology in its place so that it's not taking over our lives. It is just part of our lives. And to teach young people how to find that balance in their emotional, their physical, um, their mental health. That's it, down into plank position. Knees up, hips up, Jacob. Well done. <laughs> if there are messages from the Passover festival that are applicable to everyone and not just to Jewish people, uh, I think there are some key points, um, including being very aware of of time, being aware of, of how we're using our time and that occasionally we do need to disconnect, we need to unplug and connect with the things that are really important with our family, with our friends, those that are close to us uh, and not to be distracted by, you know, the multiple distractions that we have, that we have in our lives. And it's sometimes very good just to switch off.